Hello, and welcome back to Uncultured 20s. My name is Leanne. And my name is Julia. And this podcast is a journey of us culturally educating ourselves in what is considered classic in pop culture. Think media that people would say, you've never seen that? Yep, any films, albums, books, music videos, you name it. We go over our initial impressions and why we think it's made its way into the canon. Films like The Fifth Element or The Princess Bride. Or albums like The Wall and Surrealistic Pillow. Or even books. We're always open to suggestions, so keep up with us at Uncultured 20s on Instagram and TikTok. We're also on Letterboxd at Uncultured 20s with a 20s. Today, we'll be diving into Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. Uncultured 20s! Into the Spider-Verse is the seventh Spider-Man movie out of nine that are currently out. It coexists alongside other Spider-Man storylines while still acting as its own independent film. You do need to know some of the backstory since part of it is only briefly touched on, and it does help to know some more details about the Spider-Man universe or the Marvel universe in general, Um, but otherwise, in my opinion, the film definitely can stand alone and you can still watch it even if you have no idea about any of the other Marvel things. It also offers us a look into the character of Miles Morales, a name some comic book and Marvel lovers will know, but maybe a new name for some casual movie watchers. It was definitely a new name for me. Um, Mm -hmm. I did watch this movie when it came out and I had no idea what I was going into. My friend just took me to go see this movie. Shout out Nico. I think I wanted to go see like bad moms or something <laughs> and he's like no we're gonna go see spider-man and i was like oh i don't you know I'm, I'm not a big spider-man watcher i think i've seen maybe one of the toby Maguire ones and one of the andrew garfield ones i haven't seen any with tom holland um i'm not the biggest marvel universe fan i've been getting more into it recently with like covid and i have disney plus so yeah. i sort of watch some of them so i'm getting into the universe but i'm not i'm not in the world Mm -hmm. but i when i watched this movie i was floored i loved it i was like damn Mm -hmm. that was an amazing movie and just a few weeks ago i went to go see the second one so i guess you can already tell i'm getting sucked into this cult here (laughs) I, I'm kind of the opposite where my family, we would go see every single Marvel movie in the theaters. So we saw, we've seen like all the new Spider-Mans, everything, all the new Spider-Men. <laughs> I don't know. Just every <laughs> Spider-Man. Every Spider-Man. Yeah, we've, we've seen it. So I don't know why this one was different or why we decided this one we would skip, but I ended up watching it later by myself on Netflix, I think. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is a really good. Also so very different, obviously, from any of the other like Marvel films. And of course, it's animated. So that's difference number one. But yeah, I thought it was super good. I still haven't seen the second movie. So that I was going to watch it. And then my Wi-Fi got cut yesterday by accident. So um, hopefully soon I'll be able to see it. But yeah, I rewatched the, the first one again for this. And oh. So good. Loved it. When I went to go see it in theaters, it was it had already been out for maybe like two weeks and it was still packed. Mm. Like I was sitting next to someone like we were all arm to arm. There was a kid who was so excited with his dad, (laughs) like shouting out all the references and everything. It was really fun to be a part of that in like real time and Mm -hmm. sort of feel part of the fandom I guess but mm. it also was like okay maybe I don't want someone sitting right next to me yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to be in like a packed theater yeah so double-edged sword yeah. and the line for pop okay I'm getting off topic <laughs> but the line for popcorn was so long oh my god Synopsis. Into the Spider-Verse gives us a fresh new take on a Spider-Man film and follows our new hero Miles Morales as he takes up the mantle of Spider-Man His story begins when he is bitten by a radioactive spider, of course, while graffitiing in an abandoned subway station, and he starts developing his spider-like powers. Upon returning the next day to investigate, Miles discovers a super collider built by supervillain number one, Wilson Fisk, in an attempt to access a parallel dimension or parallel dimensions. Spider-Man, the original Spider-Man, is there trying to disable the machine fighting off Fisk's henchmen and eventually saving Miles from the chaos in the process. Classic, you know, trying to go to a parallel dimension because your family's dead. I, it's yeah. just 
all, like that motivator i feel like is in almost every single i feel movie. like i actually <laughs> see that, everything yeah. is like this killed my family now you must pay <laughs> yeah. um and things t- take a turn for the worst when fisk manages to activate the collider and spider-man is forced directly into it which causes an explosion that severely and fatally wounds him he gives miles a usb that will disable the collider and tells him to run and then miles just watches helplessly as fisk kills spider-man because he doesn't know how to use his new powers yeah i was kind of i was kind of shocked when og spider-man died and then i was like oh wait this is literally across the spider-verse so i'm like i feel like we'll see another OG oh Spider-Man there's no shortage of spider-mans in this movie <laughs> so in an effort to pick up where spider-man left off Miles tests his new powers and accidentally breaks the precious USB in the process. Later, while visiting Spider-Man's grave and feeling very remorseful and sad about his actions, uh, Miles runs into Peter B. Parker, who is an alternate dimension Spider-Man brought over by Fisk's Collider. This Peter is older. He's more run down. He's divorced from Mary Jane. He's just he's like... He's a cynical, yeah, jaded... Yeah, kind of like your anti-hero vibes. And so, you know, Miles comes across this version of Spider-Man who eventually reluctantly agrees to help him steal data from Fisk's lab to create the new USB and also sort of teach him the ropes of being Spider-Man. He's basically begging for a mentor yes. since he killed his own <laughs> ori- original one. Gone, yeah. <laughs> Once they're at the lab, they run into Olivia Octavius, a.k.a. for fans, Doc Ock, um, the gender-bended version oh, of Dr. Okay. Octopus from the original films. Um, and there, they're both saved by Gwen Stacy, who is another alternate dimension spider woman. Yeah, she was, what was she going by? Gwanda or something? Gwanda. In the film? Her <laughs> super subtle Elias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alias? Alias. Alias, yeah. <laughs> and she's also voiced by Haley Steinfeld, which mm-hmm. I didn't realize until later. Yes. But I really loved the characterization of her. Yeah. We'll get to our analysis yeah, in a yeah, minute. Yeah. But <laughs> this trio makes their way over to Aunt May's house. Then she's like, you guys are not the first ones yeah. to be here and yeah. lo and behold there's spider-man noir i like to drink egg creams and i like to fight nazis there's penny parker Hi guys. Konnichiwa. who has like this robot mm-hmm. and spider ham it can get weirder i just washed my hands that's why they're wet no other reason yeah spider ham and Peter Porker is his name. Oh, Peter Porker. Oh, yeah, gosh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I have feelings about this. Yeah. <laughs> Miles says, hey, okay, I will disable the collider afterwards. Like, I'll stay behind because this is his dimension and everybody can return to their proper dimension. But all the other spider people are like, no, you're not ready to take on that role yet. Kind of fair. Yeah, he's had his powers for like two days. He literally like, what? Okay, you were given a web slinger and now you're like, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. He already failed once. Eh. Oh, yeah. Uh, Miles returns to his Uncle Aaron's house in search of his favorite uncle for some comfort. And then, dun dun dun, finds out his uncle is the Prowler, <gasps> one of Fisk's henchmen. He's like hiding in the shadows and he sees him take off his mask and it's this big devastating shocking moment for him he runs back to aunt may's place and is like oh my god my uncle's the prowler and then inevitably ends up leading he, like, everybody leads there. Them all there there's a big fight that follows and then uncle aaron as the prowler kind of gets miles in a chokehold at one point and miles takes off his mask and he's like wait it's me and so of course his uncle can't kill him so he lets him go and then immediately gets shot by fisk can't show any weakness no nope. As the spider gang regroup, Peter B. Parker decides he will stay behind so the other spider people can return to their dimensions. And he ties Miles up (laughs) so we can't follow him. And this scene was actually, like, so hard for me. This was, like, one of the most emotional scenes for me was Mm -hmm. Miles is tied up and his mouth is duct taped over and through the door his dad is giving him this pep talk and his dad doesn't know that he's tied up he thinks that miles is just ignoring him Mm -hmm. and it's just this really sad moment because miles's dad's brother like his uncle aaron just died and there's like all this strife between their family because because miles has been ignoring them and ditching school and all this family drama so it's just this really really emotional moment where you can just feel 
his pressures from his home life, his spider life, the weight of the world building mm-hmm. on him and he literally can't do anything because he's just tied up and i know <laughs> i'm like so get sad. out of there I'm like talk to your dad <laughs> i know oh it's so sad but eventually he does manage to harness his abilities and escape and he meets up with the team and joins them to fight at the collider and defeat fisk so one by one the heroes go home and miles defeats fisk and shuts down the collider Go Miles. Yeah. He takes his leap of faith. Yes. Yes. That was so a very iconic big message in the film for sure. Watching this film after watching the second one, and I won't give any spoilers because Julia hasn't seen it yet, <laughs> but this one is a really nice, you know, complete movie with an ending. Mm-hmm. And, um, but it also felt like when I first watched it, I was like, whoa, this is so cool. They have so many Spider Man, blah, blah, blah. After watching the second one, this one feels like just the beginning oh boy <laughs> okay like, there i was like oh this is almost like not even multiversal compared yeah. to the other one okay. the other one just has so many layers so many spider people mm-hmm. so much more like mind fuckery <laughs> <laughs> this one makes sense yeah true next one, it's still very linear and yeah, straightforward yeah it is very linear and it really helps introduce people to the franchise especially mm-hmm. if they haven't had any experience yeah, before yeah. which is nice and it's just so beautiful. Mm. The art is amazing. I'm sure, sure we'll talk about that. The like just the graphics and I'm I'm so curious how they chose like Penny Parker and Porky. Yeah. Por- Peter Porky. Porky. <laughs> Peter Porky. <laughs> I'm like out of because Spider Man has so many iterations. I'm like, why did you choose these ones? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think Penny Parker was cute. It was yeah. cool. I like that it was like an anime aspect. Pork. Peter, Peter Porker? I'm sorry. We have to ask him. We need someone else. Peter Porker. He was just supposed to be... Like the comedic element. Yeah, like the comic relief or whatever. But like but it Spider-Man was like, is his own comic relief. That's like, the whole I feel thing. like his it's whole already... thing is like he's like the funny, sassy yeah. superhero. We did not need the cartoon pig. That's... I mean, I guess it was just like the shock factor too of being like, oh my God, they put the cartoon pig in. Yeah. But... I did like one line though where he was like, wait, do animals talk in this no, universe? Yeah, yeah. Very self-aware. Do animals talk in this dimension because i don't want to freak him out i love multiverse stories but it's also so oversaturated now yeah even within marvel it's like okay you have you already have doctor strange multiverse of madness Mm -hmm. you have in like the avengers they have like Like a whole timeline altering thing like yeah and then also i know that it's not the same i okay Forgive me, comic fans, but like with <laughs> X Men as well. I don't know if that's in. Marvel. Oh my gosh! Yes, right? X Men. I can't even. I have no. Uh, I cannot keep track. It's fun to figure out, yeah. and I really, I do love lore. I'm, I'm a huge <laughs> fan of lore, but maybe it's just I, it's too far gone. It's There's too, too much, much for yeah, me to yeah. learn. At a certain point, too, it's like okay, this feels like you're just making movies to make movies. Yeah. Like depending on, I I'm don't like, know, especially with Marvel. I mean, obviously, yeah, I'm like, oh, shocker, another universe. Like I yeah. don't care anymore. I'm like, yeah, give yeah, me something yeah. new. Like this is not. This is not a twist. This is not a shocker. Yeah, I've seen this twist yeah. already in your six other movies. Yeah. Like, however, it's... I will say that this one does it right. Like, if yeah. you're gonna do it, do it right like this because this is like it's not the only thing. Mm-hmm. It's not about the. It. I mean, obviously, it's it's literally called Into the Spider Verse, so it's about like the multiverse. But at the same time, there's so other as- so many other aspects of the film and things for you to even just visually for you to look at and it's still the thing too is that it still feels like a complete film with a storyline whereas like sometimes you get so lost in all the like the background and the lore and like where you have to have seen like every other movie to have any idea what's going on whereas like I said I feel like with this movie obviously it's like fun to know the little easter eggs and things if you've seen the other spider-man or read the comics or anything but you know, you could still come into this and watch it and come out of it thinking like, oh, that was a really cool film. And I got I got all of it. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of heart in the movie, mm-hmm. like his family storyline with his uncle, with his parents, with school, with identity and also just him being a secondary Spider-Man in mm-hmm. a sense, you know, like and they go into this even deeper in the second film. But there's so much substance. There's so much substance. There's so much story. Mm-hmm. There's so much artistry. It would still be a beautiful film, even if it wasn't about a multiverse. So mm-hmm. I think that's really where it stands out. And mm-hmm. 
I'm curious, I think we'll, we should definitely do an episode that dives deeper into maybe the genre of multiverse and like where this all stems from. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like every TV show that has a multiverse, especially with comics, because they're capable of you know, changing styles like that mm-hmm. are so good. Like there's an episode of fam- <laughs> there's an episode of Family Guy. Okay. <laughs> where they changed where they go to a bunch of different multiverses. And there's one where they're like live action and it's just like a baby and a dog. That's the beauty of TV is, you know, you don't have to adhere to mm-hmm. real life rules and physics and stupid yeah. shit like that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's also why multiverse like as a genre is so popular, or just like so interesting, is because you really can just do anything. You can bring animation into a real life movie and it makes sense in a way or like, I mean, obviously it wasn't exactly like that in this case, but you can just mess around and kind of do whatever you want because it's like, oh, this could be a possibility. So like, let's just throw it in. But it can be, it can be, there's like a line where like it can be sort of ridiculous and you're like, okay, what am I watching? Or like, oh, this was like very thoughtful and like, this was interesting. I feel like... You know, that's also sort of how superheroes started was this escapism of like bending rules and Mm -hmm. what is possible and what's not. Forgive my very surface knowledge of superheroes, (laughs) but in my understanding, they became really big in the 30s or so. And it's like really a wartime Mm -hmm. morale boost, right? Like there's this amazing person who can fix everything and has all these powers and can always defeat the bad guy. Mm -hmm. And maybe the multiverse is sort of an extension of that because... Uh, newsflash this world is sort of headed into disaster (laughs) and now we're just dreaming about some alternate universe that we can escape (laughs) so we can't just rely on one superhero now we just need to fucking blast a hole and jump (laughs) through it into like some other world yeah (laughs) peter yeah Yeah. oh Oh, sorry sorry. did you mean mean that or peter peter well, we're all called yeah, Peter, all, Peter. All, Peter yeah. Parker. Same, Same again. We're all Peter Parker. This is the fourth iteration of Spider-Man because we've had Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Tom Holland is still happening now. And then obviously this is a different take because we have Miles and it's animation. And I love Stan Lee's uh, little of course. cameo in there. Every Well, that's the thing. Every Marvel quote movie, yeah. he's got to be there. It was also his last voice acting role before oh, he died. Oh, okay. Have they still been doing them afterwards? Like, have they been posthumously, like, editing him in? I think he was CGI'd into some films, or yeah. his voice was CGI'd into some films. But, yeah, I think he was still posthumously in some of them. Mm. But um, a fun little fact, too, all the a lot of the animators wanted to animate Stan Lee, and so any scene um, where there's, like, a subway uh, or, like, the train car or whatever... Um, the usually Stan, a little mm-hmm. animation of Stan Lee is on the train because all the animators. Okay. Want to I have to that. take. I have to keep an eye out. For yeah, that. yeah, yeah. A little Easter egg yeah. in there. <laughs> and there's a lot going on right now with writer strikes, actor strikes. Um, and last summer, I remember there was a lot of big stories about She Hulk, and mm-hmm. how animators are being pushed so heavily to like produce things so quickly mm-hmm. um not sure what i where i meant to go with that but that is something to, yeah. <laughs> to I, that's something that i think about at least when watching these films like how much time it takes to animate these things to draw these things mm-hmm. uh part two just came out and it's been a while since the first one but then the third film in this franchise is supposed to come out in march oh which is a quick quick that's turnaround. very quick yeah um, however, it might be delayed because of the strikes and things. True. So we'll see. I, for one, say it's okay to wait a little bit of time if you pay these people what they're asking because yeah. <laughs> they work really, really hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm interested to see where the film industry is going to be going after the strike. I mean, just because we're we talk about film constantly and actors and mm-hmm. it's such a cultural and cultural climate that we're going through right now with workers rights in general and I'm really interested to see where that goes and I think that also reflects in their work Mm -hmm. because like with She-Hulk I don't know if any of you fans watch She-Hulk here (laughs) I actually watched a few episodes myself because I did like Orphan Black and the main actress is from Orphan Black really good show highly highly recommend (laughs) and there's just some animation scenes that are so bad and it's like you can tell that these people were overworked really really hard Mm -hmm. yeah in design and things like people will ask me to do animation 
like our little animated and I'm like are you crazy like I'm like you think you can just pick this up and figure it out like oh my gosh no it's like it is such a labor of love so I like that term a labor of love because you can really tell how much love and how much thought and time is put into it like with that stuff with Stanley animating him and mm-hmm. it's because these people really care about their art and mm-hmm. really love the beauty of the universe that is being built and being part of that and Mm -hmm. I think it's a really seamless blend of comic and animation and film. Mm -hmm. This is one of the first uh, films I've watched where I really truly feel like it's literally coming off the page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's I think that was such a cool thing that they were able to do with this film as well as because it's an animated movie. You know, you have the option to make it sort of just like the comics like you can't really do that when it's chris evans and robert downey jr just like you need like cgi for like the suit or whatever Mm -hmm. but in the film before miles is um bitten by the spider or i guess i should say after he's bitten by the spider that's when all these comic book like direct comic book elements start popping up so you start seeing like the text boxes and like speech bubbles or like when his like spidey senses are tingling it's like the little zappy electric lines and it's exciting to do it in an animated film because you have so much there are so many possibilities and i think something else that really elevates the film is the score and the soundtrack and the sound effects so like yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it it like chilled me like yeah. honestly like <laughs> hearing that i'm like oh like that's a really like that's a terrifying yeah. noise <laughs> and the just the overall soundtrack the post malone i'm not right. a, i'm not a posty fan but <laughs> it was a really good soundtrack yeah i thought it fit the the vibes very well yeah, the, the film, scenery so i thought that was really cool yeah and there's also some really great cast members i have them all listed out here for us but it's like every single one of them is like a well-known name okay so can you take me through who plays who Yes, so for Shamik Moore, it's that's Miles. Okay. Um, Mahershala Ali, I believe, is the uncle. Mm. Plays Uncle Aaron. Jake Johnson, who's Nick from New Girl, he plays. Is he the older? He's the older, more <gasps> decrepit Peter okay. Parker. Yeah, I was watching it, and it's. I was like, that sounds just like Nick from New yeah. Girl. Okay, <laughs> I'm glad that has been confirmed. Yes. Um, Haley Steinfeld, of course, plays uh, Gwen. Brian Tyree Henry, he's um, Miles' dad. Mm. Lily Tomlin is Aunt May, who also is Frankie from Grace and Frankie. Who, fun fact, (laughs) Julia's hedgehog is named after. (laughs) Um, Yes, Zoe Kravitz plays Mary Jane. Um, John Mulaney was Spider-Ham, a.k.a. Peter Porker. I don't even like John Mulaney, so just strike the <laughs> whole thing. Whole thing yeah. Strike the whole thing. Um, Kimiko Glenn was Penny Parker. Oh, Nicholas Cage um, as Spider Spider Man Noir, oh. which was so funny. And apparently, he was one of the first people to be cast for the film, which is awesome. <laughs> um, Chris Pine was the original Spider Man who was killed. Mm-hmm. Catherine Hahn is Doc Ock or oh, Olivia Octavius, okay. and she's also uh, the witch. Yes, in from WandaVision. Yes, from Got WandaVision. It. And then Liv, Shri- Liv Schreiber, I believe is how you say it, uh, was Fisk. Okay, got yeah. it. So, I mean... I'm really nailing my, my multiverse knowledge, yeah. I feel like. Getting all these things. Kamiko Glenn, for those of you who don't know, she was in Orange is the New Black. Mm-hmm. She plays So-So, and she's actually leading... Not leading, but she's a really prominent voice right now in the actor strike. Oh, yeah? Interesting. Oh, cool. Overlap since we just talked about it. Nice. This film has a 97% on Rotten Tomatoes. Not that many people can brag about that and That's say insane, that. Yeah. It's it's so good. Yeah, <laughs> it's a masterpiece. Go like, watch it's this. It's like 4.9 stars on everything that I've seen. Mm-hmm. Everybody really loved it. Um, and I can see why. Because I think that we both agree. I, I loved the like aesthetic and the colors and everything too. Like all the neons. Um, and same like when the multiverse whenever something's happening with the multiverse there's like glitches and it's like neon orange and pink and I was just like oh my god it's so beautiful there was a note about the way it was animated how it was rendered digitally and then each like scene or whatever was also hand drawn over and rendered that way which is what gives it that like super unique sort of blended look between like digital and sort of hand-drawn and then another interesting fact was that i found was that um in the beginning of the film miles is animated in 12 frames per second Mm. um generally you animate in 24 frames per second 
Um, so all the other characters were moving at a faster speed. And then Miles sort of has more of a jerkier, sort of disjointed um, feel to his movement. Mm-hmm. And then as the film progresses, his frames per second that he's animated oh. at speeds up. So it kind of mirrors his acceptance of his destiny and his journey into becoming Spider-Man. So it's a, there's all these like little neat tricks that they had going on that when I was reading about it after, I was like, this is so cool. Like, I'm like, this is so like thought out and like there's so much attention to detail, which obviously helped it become the success that it was. That's why y'all need experts and you can't just get AI to do all this stuff. I'm yeah. sorry I'm going off on this tangent. <laughs> it's just been on my mind lately, but just so thoughtful and it really makes me appreciate people who do craft Mm -hmm. like this like it's it's impeccable pop quiz pop quiz we are gonna test each other and you all right it is our pop quiz time i'm asking the questions today and leanne will be guessing the answers (gasps) please play along at home (laughs) okay here we go so for our first question how many animators worked on spider-man into the spider-verse a 110 b 60 or c 180 i'm just gonna go with the highest number and say 180 yes you are correct it is 180 so that's kind of an insane amount of people to be working to be animating and a little fact is that it could take animators a month to create four seconds of animation for the film Oh my god. There's like so little payoff. I, I mean, of course there's a big payoff at the end of the film, but it's like watching a movie and you're like, oh guys, I worked on this movie. And they're like, what part did you do? And it's like four seconds. Yeah. That one, that one. <laughs> I know. It's crazy like to think about how much really goes into it. Because especially with like that hand-drawn type of animation, like you're working on a single frame at a time. And like how many, if it's like, I, I don't know. It's just an ins- it's a crazy number mm-hmm. to to be like. So that's why they had to have so many people. Yeah, but yeah. Okay, next question: Who uh, was considered to voice Peter B. Parker? A. Jack Black. B. Tobey Maguire. Or C. Ryan Reynolds. Hmm. Okay. All good choices. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds is so prevalent right now with Barbie. <laughs> No, that's Ryan Gosling. Oh. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Ryan Reynolds is the Canadian one who's married to Blake Lively. And he was Deadpool. I Oh, my God. And he was <laughs> I literally thought they were the same person as well right <laughs> oh now. God. Oh, I thought Ryan... Okay, I thought Ryan Reynolds was Ryan Gosling. Okay. I think... Are they both Canadian? No. I think they're both Canadian. Okay, maybe that's also I think confusing. that's also yeah, why yeah, yeah. I was confused. Okay. Um, Toby Maguire, I could definitely see that being like, okay, he's like the old, decrepit like, <laughs> Spider Man. <laughs> um, and Jack Black is just, I got a soft spot in my heart for him. I gotta say, Jack Black. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, no, it was actually Toby Maguire. So. That makes sense. That yeah, makes sense. there was a lot of discussion about having Toby be the old. Spider-Man, but then the filmmakers were worried that it would be too distracting if he was, mm. and they wanted to really focus on Miles' story, so they didn't want you to be thinking about good old Tobey Maguire. Well, honestly, I don't even think I could pick Tobey Maguire's voice out of a crowd. <laughs> True. But um, that would have been a fun cameo, but I feel like I feel like they still have an opportunity to throw, throw him in there, him yeah, and yeah. Andrew and... Tom <laughs> and every all and, the Spider Man, <laughs> um, Emma Stone, and who, who is it? Kirsten Dunst, who's oh, in yeah. the Tony Maguire one. Like all, like there's still plenty of opportunity for them to make an appearance in the last one. I'm sure they will. Mm-hmm. If they didn't even, I don't, I don't think they were in the second one. There are honestly so many people, so many cameos oh in the second one. Like I couldn't even tell you. Yeah, Childish Gambino was in it. Oh, you know he actually had a very brief. Um, cameo in this film as well because the i think that the idea for miles morales or something was based on that episode of community when he's in the spider-man pajamas and so yeah and so in this film there's like a scene when he's in aaron's apartment and in in the background on the tv it's Mm. that that scene from that episode of community and he's there oh okay so that's another little easter egg there are so many easter eggs in this film. it's so much fun i love watching those videos on youtube of people just dissecting every single easter egg like that's my favorite genre of youtube film (laughs) it's just going over other films yes like 
kind of geeky, but I love it. <laughs> like Coraline theories, Marvel timeline, like the timeline ones, especially. True. If we haven't divulged yet, I am a Doctor Who fan. So those are, (laughs) there's a lot over there. So I I am honestly surprised that it's taken me this long to even get slightly involved in Marvel. But I do think it's because of the fan base. I really do. Like, I love comics. I had a huge comic collection growing up, uh, mostly Archie comics. (laughs) And you know what? I like, I honestly think about this when I was watching this is they had multiple tv adaptations of archie like not just riverdale which is like i don't even consider it to be part of can't even go down that road yeah i I don't want to (laughs) but they had a bunch of different animated shows of archie Mm -hmm. when i was growing up and the voice actors were never right why hi i'm archie jug and it's veronica betty and reggie as always like watching it their voices were always like super high pitched it just didn't sound right so I feel like for the longest time, I really hated comic to movie adaptations because of that. So mm. it's really nice to watch one that's like, okay, this makes sense. I have a psychic link with a spider who lives inside my father's robot. And we're best friends. So I guess with that in mind, we should probably categorize the film. Yes. Let me know. Are you joining the cult? <laughs> Adding it to the list? Or hiding the fans are after me? This is tricky. Because, you know, I mean, I've watched it for a while. It's not like this is a new film. And I've championed it for a long time. I've always, like, recommended this film. I'm going to say adding it to the list. I'm still not a huge Marvel fan. I have watched a bunch of them since. You know, I've I've been getting into it. But I need a little bit more from them. You know, if they're doing more <laughs> films like this, I will join the cult. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. But until then, I'm just going to remain at a neutral and say adding it to the list. Fair enough. I will be watching the third one in theaters. Got to complete the trilogy. Mm-hmm. But y'all better pay your animators. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> That's my stance on that. How about you? I think I have to say, I mean, I don't know. I, I've seen all the Marvel movies in theaters. We used to buy them on DVD all the time. I think I'm I think I'm think joining the cult. I'm... I'm <laughs> I thought that this movie was obviously sort of a departure from what I've seen and I really loved it so I I mean I thought this was great I would love to see more of this I guess it wasn't 100% Marvel but still like Mm -hmm. more of this superhero journey going towards these kind of films versus just the crazy over the top ridiculous like CGI type films like even though this was animated and was multiversal it still felt more rooted in reality than some live action Marvel films. For sure. Right? One hundred percent. With a lot of the a lot of the superhero, even like DC and films now, the emphasis is just on like making it as crazy and like as like fantastical as possible and you lose sort of the character development. And that's also the thing with Spider Man that I I I love Spider Man. I like he's one of my favorite superheroes, which is so funny, but that's one of the things with Spider Man too, is like he's supposed to be just like a kid who's Mm -hmm. like a nerd and he doesn't know what's going on but he's like smart and you know that he's always very sarcastic and silly and stuff and so it's it's a nice departure from the the serious like gravity of like the universe is gonna collapse it's like you know you have you have a nice little break you just have a regular kid you know he's got parents he's just like (laughs) going to school that's always something about spider-man too that i I always thought was it's it's like stanley said you know anybody can put on that mask that's the really nice aspect about spider-man and you know i am sick and tired of the thors of the world oh thor's the worst i'm sorry yeah i don't even know if there's any thor fans out there because i'm like (laughs) really there's a thor fan out there i don't know a single one (laughs) From what I understand, I did watch the the Thanos snap one and yeah. the one where they come back. I, yeah. Like, I don't even remember what any of them are called now. <laughs> but from my understanding is like that sort of generation of superheroes is sort of retired. Like mm-hmm. Captain America stepping away. Yeah. The Black Widow stepping away. Yeah. It's all the it's all about the younger mm-hmm. like Scarlet Witch and falcon and all these other ones so let us know who your favorite superhero is we're gonna have some choices in the poll it's attached on spotify but we'll also do a poll on instagram if y'all are on that apple music grind Mm -hmm. i respect it (laughs) tell us if you want to see more superhero movies more animated movies there's like a whole depth of worlds there if you want to torture me and make me watch into the multivert or not what what's the what's the avengers one 
There's a Doctor Strange one. I watched one of them. Isn't that also with Haley Steinfeld? She's in the show for Hawkeye. Oh, okay. It's so confusing. (laughs) It's so confusing. That's the thing is they all blend together Also, you have the same actors within the same sort of franchise playing different... I know. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We can cover some. I would love to do like an X-Men. I really do. I do like X-Men. X-Men was fun. Yeah. I love watching um, those when I was those a kid. Those ones are good. <laughs> so tell us. We, we'll even cover some comics. Like I would sure. love to go down a comic rabbit hole. You heard us talk about Riverdale. We will cover some Archie, I'm sure, at some point. But let us know. And yeah, Julia, do you have anything else to add before we finish off? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> um... <laughs> I would love to do more animated films. I love the art style. I love diving into that and even researching this was really fun. So maybe that's something we can get into as well. Yeah, Julia's a great artist. <laughs> as we've discussed, <laughs> every cover you see is her perfect <laughs> handicraft work. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. And that's it from us. Connect with us on Letterboxd at Uncultured20s, that's 20s, to see all the films we've covered, or our Spotify to see our playlists at Uncultured20s, that's T-W-E-N-T-I-E-S. We are also on Instagram at Uncultured20s, T-W-E-N-T-I-E-S. We will take a lot of input on there, so if you feel like there's something really iconic that we need to cover, that's where you need to go. And we're also on TikTok. We've been making some ridiculous videos. Mm -hmm. Please go check them out so we're not just embarrassing ourselves for nothing. (laughs) Make sure you're subscribed wherever you listen to podcasts so that you're notified whenever our episodes drop. We're on all major platforms. We're on Culture 20s, and we'll see you on the airwaves. Culture 20